one of the most well-known French artists of his day, Jean-Léon Jérôme, is recognized for revolutionizing historical painting. However, Jérôme's paintings drew harsh criticism and controversy from those who thought that his combination of academic artwork with genre painting placed him in the middle of two antiquated schools. There is no denying that Jérôme was a technical master, despite the criticism his paintings received for their exotic and even immoral subject matter. In his later career, Jérôme reinvented himself as a sculptor, but he remains best known for his spectacular historical narratives that were made even more popular through the photographic reproduction of his images. Jérôme's many Orient artworks demonstrated both his power and weakness. Jérôme, like many other artists, lived a pretty interesting life as well. The son of a goldsmith and jeweler, Jean-Léon Jérôme was born on May 11, 1824, in the French provincial town of Vesou. An intelligent, studious child, he studied Latin, Greek, and history at high school. He was taught drawing by Claude Basile Carriage, a neoclassical painter and former student of Jean-Auguste Dominique Ingres. Indeed, a young Jérôme showed an impressive talent for art, and his teacher instructed him to learn from plaster casts and models, which he had brought to Vassoul from Paris. In 1838, Jérôme won his first prize for drawing, and his work caught the eye of a friend of the French historical painter Paul de la Roche. By the age of 16, Jérôme had obtained his baccalaureate and he left his hometown for Paris, where he went to study in de la Roche's studio, whom he adored. However, Jérôme had gone against his father's wishes in the move and struggling to survive, he was forced by circumstance to paint religious cards, which he sold on the steps of churches to scratch out a living. For three years, Jérôme followed a strict routine, studying from casts in the morning while painting or sketching on plein air in the afternoon. He was also encouraged to copy engravings and old masters in the Louvre, and to attend classes at the prestigious École des Beaux-Arts. His dedication and ability eventually earned his father's approval, who, pleased with his son's rapid progress, gave him a generous allowance of 1,200 francs a year. In 1843, Jérôme and Della Roche traveled to Italy, visiting Rome, Venice, and Naples. Through Della Roche's connections, he met several young artists and burgeoning photographers, including Henri Lesec, Charles Neg, and Gustave Le Gray. These new acquaintances would go on to influence the cinematographic look of much of his work. Indeed, in 1856, the French poet and novelist Théophile Gautier had championed photography as a means of enabling artists like Jérôme to paint images that were truly faithful to the real world. Jérôme had, in fact, returned from his first excursion to the Middle East with over a hundred photographs, and though he allowed his imagination to inform his artworks, Jérôme's highly detailed drawings drew on these paintings to represent his own vision of the colorful region. 
On his return to Paris, Jérôme studied under Swiss artist Charles Glaire. Glaire had taken over De La Roche's studio. Glaire taught Jérôme how to improve his drawing and to purify his forms. It was under Glaire's influence, indeed, that he matured his skill for genre painting. And in 1846, the Brotherhood of the neo grec was established. In 1856, Jérôme embarked upon his first trip to Egypt and the Middle East. He traveled the Nile, visited Cairo, crossed the Sinai Peninsula, and explored the Holy Land, including visits to Jerusalem and Damascus. He took inspiration from the North African landscape and its people, producing his first Orientalist works. Three years later, Jérôme captured the imagination of the American public when two of his paintings were exhibited in New York. This drew critics and collectors back to the old world, and for a time, Jérôme's Orientalism came to represent high art in America. However, his success was also his critical downfall. The more popular his art became, the more derided he became as a progressive artist. As art historian Mary G. Morton explained, he was idealized for his professionalism, his cosmopolitan Frenchness, his intellectualism, erudition, and refined technical training. But he was also disdained as overly commercial and suspected of a characteristically French moral degeneracy that some Americans sought to escape in the reconstruction of their national identity. Despite his criticism, Jérôme could command fantastic prices for his canvases, and his works were selling for 10 to 100 times more than his Impressionist contemporaries. In 1863, Jérôme married Marie Goupil, the daughter of successful international art dealer Adolphe Goupil, who he had been working with for four years. He described his 21-year-old bride as a young woman of rare beauty and charming grace. They moved to a townhouse at 6 Rue de Bruxelles, near the music hall, the Folie Berger. Their first child, Jeanne, was born that year, and they would go on to have three more daughters and one son. His good fortune continued when, in 1864, he took up a post at the prestigious École des Beaux-Arts, becoming one of the school's most respected teachers. Jérôme's professional relationship with Adolphe Goupil, known as the international powerhouse, of contemporary art dealers was crucial to the artist's success. Goupil sold photographs and photogravures of modern paintings through offices in New York, London, and Berlin, and Jérôme became his most reproduced artist. Jérôme, meanwhile, traveled throughout the Europe and Middle East, visiting Spain, Greece, Turkey, Jerusalem, and Syria. He visited Egypt no less than six times in his life, and his tours inspired some spectacular, shocking, and provocative paintings, including pictures of slaves waiting to be sold at market, women luxuriating in Turkish baths, a belly dancer entertaining soldiers at rest, and severed heads hanging from hooks outside a mosque. He was widely dismissed by intellectuals as a fantasist whose work served only salacious and commercial ends. Around the same time, Jérôme fell from grace in the U.S., 
denounced as a corrupting influence on American art. An article in the New York Evening Post in 1882 claimed that Jerome was an exemplar of the current trend of artists painting purely for popular appeal to attain high prices. The Barbizon School began to take over and collectors opted instead for the works of artists like Jean-Baptiste Camille Corot, Théodore Rousseau, and Jean-François Millet. By 1898, Jérôme was nominated Grand Officer, the penultimate rank in the Légion d'honneur, and a rare distinction for an artist. He has been described as a man fascinated with appearances, both others and his own. He dressed well, was proud of his bushy mane, and enjoyed being photographed. The art journal said Jérôme's look was peculiar, before adding that his head, with its deep-set, large eyes, wild masses of gray hair, and pointed gray mustache, is eminently picturesque. He is as thin as a shadow and is distinguished for extreme industry, excessive irritability, and extreme dislike of visitors. Jérôme's concern with his own appearance seemingly informed his own death in 1904, when he died neatly and without fuss in his studio at the age of 80, in front of a portrait of Rembrandt. His rank as Legion of Honor entitled him to a funeral of military pageant, but he left instructions for a simpler affair. He was buried in the Montmartre Cemetery in front of his own sculpture, Sorrow. It is estimated that he produced some 600 canvases, 60 sculptures, and hundreds of drawings and studies during his lifetime. Jérôme's career ran parallel with another French artist, William Adolphe Bougereau. The latter's beautifully executed neoclassical nudes, religious and genre paintings were also hugely popular with the public. But like Jérôme, Bougereau divided opinion due in part to his disdain for Impressionism. And like Bougereau, Jérôme fell into critical disrepute after his death. Despite the fact that his work is held in collections by the Louvre Museum and Musée d'Orsay in Paris, the Metropolitan Museum of Modern Art in New York, and the National Gallery in London, Jérôme's relevance especially in recent decades, has been questioned, his bitter opposition to modern art not helping matters. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel by selecting the subscribe button below. Please give us a thumbs up. Also, please feel free to share the video on your preferred social media service. We are super excited about you watching our video and look forward to your continued support. It means the world to us. See you in the following videos.